Hello beautiful people, you are welcome back again to my YouTube channel and I greet you all according to your time. To my very new subscribers, honestly, I'm overwhelmed and to my returning subscribers, you are appreciated as well. Without wasting much time, let's quickly jump into today's video. It may interest you to know that the Canadian economy still wants a lot of immigrants. Yeah, they still want a lot of immigrants because they depend on all type of skills in the economy. So whether you are skilled, semi-skilled or unskilled, you definitely have a place in Canada. The first thing you should know is where you belong. Like, so people no, they are not so skilled, but they don't know the skill type in which they fall into. We actually have four skill types. We have the uh, skill type A, the B, the C, and the D. So when you talk about the skill type A and B, you are referring to the high-skilled and skilled workers. But when you talk about the skill type C and D, we are talking about the semi-skilled and low-skilled or unskilled workers. So you need to know where you belong and when you are low skilled then you should know you fall under the trade kind of skill when i say trade maybe agriculture farming and um, maybe semi-skilled like doing a kind of as a, an assistant role maybe uh, for example kitchen assistant role so that's more like a semi-skilled um, kind of uh, knock establishing that then it's now to find the program that will be feasible to immigrate through and we have a couple of them I'm going to be stating them in the next slide talking about the PMP we have about five provinces that offer opportunities to low skilled workers that want to immigrate to Canada as permanent residents. Again, using Saskatchewan as a case study, although whatever I'm listing now is common to all of them, at least it's almost common to all of them. So for SIMP, you also need to create an account with them, but then you need to be eligible for this program. One, you need to have your language test results and you should meet with the CLB of four. The good thing is that it's not as high as those going through the process as a skilled worker. So you need a CLB of for your proficiency test results, either in form of French or English. Then you need to have about one full year of working experience and three years of working. So that's also a requirement. Then you need a job offer from the province. You need to have a job over in that province then you also need to have your evaluation that is for your studies for your post-secondary uh, education if you are in Canada you don't need to evaluate your result but if you're outside of Canada you need to do your ECA that's your educational credential assessment so those are the things you need to be eligible for the program also known as the pilot program like I said whatever is submitted in the SIMP is almost the same as the other provinces. The next is the Atlantic Immigration Pilot. I first learned about it in 2020 and um, it's more like the remaining provinces are the ones now offering opportunities to low-skilled workers. But in this case, you don't need a Canadian work experience. No, you don't need this. But you only need a Canadian job. You know the way they do the job in Canada. When nobody's picking it up, that is when a foreigner can get a job. You understand? So you also need to have, in this in this program, you need proof of fun. The proof of fun that will be enough for you and your family to settle. Even if your family will not join you yet, but you need to provide proof of fund that will be sufficient for the whole family. 
the proof of fund may not be too much because it's actually for slow skilled workers. You need to also have a high school diploma in Canada or if you're outside of Canada, you need to evaluate your results in such a way that it will be equivalent to the uh, uh, degree of um, education over there in Canada. You also need IELTS. If you're a French speaker, you're an English speaker, you have to do IELTS. But the CLB may not be high, just like that of the PNP, because they know it's low skilled workers that are writing it, so they will not make the the points to be too high so that you don't find it difficult to achieve. The next is the Agri Food Immigration Pilot. As you can see, it's carrying pilot pilot. So anything related to agriculture is what they need low skilled workers for, such as farming, um, rearing animals, and the rest of it. So if you are qualified for this program as well, you was to need to get a job offer from the Canadian employer. Then you will need your proof of fund as well. You will need to write your language test. You also need your ECA if you are outside of Canada. We have the rural and the northern program from the world rural. So maybe all those interior villages where some kind of labors are needed. They will also create opportunity for low skilled workers to come over, to come and take over those jobs. The fifth point, which is the temporary foreign work program, is still the, almost the same you getting a job when there is no one to take the job in Canada. So if you look at these five routes, you will see that you will need to have a Canadian job offer. So that brings me to how to get a job outside of Canada. The other points you can do them like writing your IELTS, creating your proof of form. Long before COVID, it was really, really hectic to get a job. Like, you have to go to Canadian Job Bank and go look for a job. The truth is, let me say out of every hundred, maybe it's 20. 20 is even too much that will get a job from there because it was not really easy. And you, like I said, it, that job has to be vacant for you as a foreigner to get it. But now, after COVID, it's like, it's not a little easier. Not so easy though, but then it's a little easier. There are now more ways you can reach out to Canadian employers if you need a job. Outside the job bank, which all of us or almost everybody knows, you can go through LinkedIn. LinkedIn is another good place where you can reach out to employers. So you can just put your CV there and check for any Canadian job that you think you can do you reach out to the employers, send them mails, tell them why you think you are good for that position. Just reach out to different employers and be prayerful and hopeful as well. One of the employers will just reach out to you that, oh, I see that you are uh, fit for this job. And the next thing is they will start working your working visa that you used to come over. The truth is when you get to Canada, you always find your way. Most of these things are listed if you are in Canada, it's easier for you because when you're in Canada, you don't need to do your ECA. When you're in Canada, it's possible, it's, it's easier to have uh, a full time experience, it's easier to get a job approval letter from your employer. So that's all for that. The second way is you having a good CV. When I say good CV, you know you can have a good CV and the format could be wrong. So you need to get the Canadian format. That is the way they do their CV. You need to get it and fine tune yours to that to that format. Okay? Then you also need to get a good cover letter to back up your CVs as well. You can go on Indeed Canada to also check for Canadian jobs. You can also get through internet. Maybe you just go on Google, you can search it out. Canadian jobs available. 
like that then you can go through your friends your relatives now a lot of people are immigrating there as maybe they are your sisters your brothers your lady you can just let them know that please um i i want to go through this road please any job you see that is vacant kindly let me know and uh, there's a way your relative or your friend can connect you with the employer it's easier because the person is over there you can go through them then you can also go through um recruitment agencies they are also good at that their services are free of charge you can reach out to different recruitment agencies and they could also be of help if you have tried all these many routes there's no way though there may be a little wait there may be a little wait but no they won't at least one will reach out to you in my next slide i'll be listing some agencies some recruitment agencies you can actually uh, uh write to uh, for jobs in canada so you are going to see that in my next slide address the issue of getting a Canadian job outside of Canada so just take advantage of all these things I have listed reach out to, to those agencies and see how you can get the job outside of Canada again be prayerful and be hopeful as for writing IELTS some people may say I am low skilled I'm not that learned why is they writing IELTS well the good news is the CLB is actually low so they don't expect so much from you and for you to write IELTS don't just go into the hall and you just write it the way you are saying it. There are some tips in writing IELTS that will make you to pass it once. So it's not as it's not that deep. It's not that deep, okay? So I wish you well in your journey, you know. I wish you well in your immigration process and I hope it will be smooth for you. Thanks for watching this video and watch out for my next video on how to evaluate your results because in this immigration process, you cannot uh, really escape ECE. You will see, even in the express entry pool, you need to get your ECA done. In your PMP, you need to get your ECA done. Even this, even for um, low skilled workers immigrating, they need to also do their ECA. And a lot of people don't know how to do that. And I also still share my experience too on how we evaluated as. So keep staying tuned. If you are yet to subscribe, please do and turn on your post notification bell so that you don't miss out on my videos. See you in my next one. And bye.